Hello and welcome to today's European SharePoint Office 365 and Azure Community Webinar. My name is Shane and I'm delighted to be joined by Karuane Gatimu, Microsoft USA, who will be talking to you today about what's new at Microsoft Teams, the hub for teamwork in Microsoft 365. Remember to join the conversation about today's webinar on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at EuropeanSP and our hashtag is ESPC20. Don't forget to check out our resource center. This is jam packed with the latest blogs, ebooks, and webinars. Check it out at SharePointEurope.com forward slash resource center. Join us for ESPC20 in beautiful Amsterdam. Register now at SharePointEurope.com to receive an exclusive 30% discount from the 9th to the 12th of November 2020. After the webinar, we will have a questions and answers session. Type any questions you have in the questions window. Questions will be selected and answered at the end of the presentation. This webinar will be recorded and added to the Resource Centre where you'll be notified by email when it is available. And now I'm going to pass you over to our webinar presenter, Karuana Gatimu. Hello, Karuana. Hello and good morning. Thank you for having me. Great. Karuana, take it away. All right, I will. Well, welcome everyone. Hello out there. I am happy to be here to talk with you today about what's new in Microsoft Teams. Some of you may have uh, been be joining this webinar uh, because you missed my session at ESP19. It was a pretty jam-packed room, and I promised the organizers that I would do another webinar so that we could catch up. And I've updated the material from that session uh, with other announcements that we've had. So I'm going to go ahead and hop in. Please do ask your questions. I am here to answer them. We'll get to as many as we can in the course of this webinar. I'm going to assume that most of you know a little bit about Microsoft Teams as the new productivity hub for teamwork in Microsoft 365. It provides chat and meetings and callings and access to files, apps, and workflows. And it's really built on top of many of the other workloads in Office 365 and brings them together in a way that we hope will streamline and empower your productivity. So I hope that many of you are out there already using it. This is a shot of our desktop app. But of course, we're available on the web and on mobile devices as well. I personally use Teams quite a bit on my iPad. I love that experience and that I can have a centralized uh, productivity experience uh, for employees now. Uh, so we're, the modern meeting experience is an important component of Microsoft Teams. Now, as many of you know, we have uh, announced the end of life for Skype for Business Online, and Microsoft Teams is its successor. And it's so much more than that. Uh, we really re-engineered Microsoft Teams uh, directly for the cloud, built on Azure services and modern software development methods so that we could also speed new features to you. And that means that we have a pretty healthy pace of change. Uh, that can be pretty challenging. As a former IT manager and service owner, I can tell you that a pace of change on the type of Teams can be difficult. But we have a lot of tools to help you go through that uh, and make sure that you're giving the most uh, greatest experience to your employees. And we'll talk about some of those tools today. But it's important to know that, as you can see here, video is a very large part of the Teams meeting experience. And we encourage people to use it not only because it's a modern communication method, but it really does improve the connectivity that you have amongst team members. You notice even today I have my webcam on in this experience, and I really do believe it makes a difference when you, people can see your face uh, and you can uh, have that additional human connection even when you're working virtually. The other piece of it is making sure that you are really transforming workplace collaboration. Um, I always say new features are only as good as the business uh, results that they empower. And it's important to keep that in context as you are thinking about uh, what to do next for Teams and what it can do for your business. Make sure you're listening to everything I share today in that context. How are you going to use these things? How can it help you drive results in your organization? Um, how can it help you solve real-world problems and streamline those business processes? 
one of the important things is that by being the hub in Microsoft 365, it can bring together data from many locations, including Azure services. Uh, you've heard announcements about Project Cortex. There's so many good things that are happening in this space right now, and they can be centered in that experience in Teams. Ultimately, this will streamline the IT management process as we make this transition and bring these things together. Everyone is then connected on a single platform. You're able to have a similar experience and actually streamline training because on the mobile device, on the website, and in the desktop app, you have similarity uh, and an elegance of experience that is important for uh, employees today. Modern employees have expectations about their enterprise software. Uh, and so it's important that we'll be able to meet those needs in a way that is also safe and secure. Microsoft Teams is built on top of Office 365 and all of its security and compliance features. Uh, we are ready for prime time in that department, and you can rest assured that Microsoft Teams will aid you in your goal of keeping your data safe and secure, as all Microsoft products do. One of the big questions that I get all the time, though, before I hop into new features, is how do I think about governance and how do I think about controlling sprawl and making sure that all these things actually do make sense for my employees? I'd love to show this slide because I want people to think of this in a tiered model. Governance is not a spray can that you just spray over all of the software in your organization. Uh, and I see a lot of organizations try to do that, and that's an experience that most employees will balk at. Uh, if an employee does not like an experience, what will they do? They will go use something else so they can get their job done if they feel too much friction. So our goal is to help you create what I like to think of as a frictionless governed experience. Uh, and good governance precedes great adoption of any piece of software. And so it's important to think about Microsoft Teams and the teams that you create and all of the experiences in Office 365 with these three kinds of tiers available. At that company level, that's the largest one-to-many type of experience you want to create. And that can be with Teams, with Yammer, and with SharePoint. Uh, that is something that's usually curated by the company, and uh, it's governed in the sense that you don't want more than one intranet for your company. This doesn't matter what size you may be. How deeply you use SharePoint or whether you choose to use Yammer or not or simply Teams for your, those broad conversations depends on your size. Right now, Microsoft Teams will accommodate 5,000 members in a team. And so if you are larger than that, for broad conversations like support or questions about products, you're likely going to want to use Yammer. Uh, if you're smaller or if you're not already invested in Yammer, Teams can meet those needs. At a department and division level uh, for functional units or cross-organizational types of projects, um, you usually want to have champions or people who will take ownership of that team, curate the channels, make sure conversations are there. And one thing we've seen over time with people using Teams is that people tend to use a lot of group chats. And group chats are a fantastic thing. Uh, you and I and a couple of people, we can come together and we can talk about, for instance, producing this webinar today. But it's even better if we have that conversation in a channel, in a team for all the events that we might do across the year. That really helps uh, when new people come on board. They have transparency into that conversation. So we'd like to make sure that, that people have department, divisional, or cross-organizational teams uh, where the conversation and files and work is actually going on. That's what Teams is for. It is the center for where you actually get work done. At the work group level, this is where we believe in automatic provisioning. So those top two levels, uh, because of naming conventions and other things you can introduce, you may want to name those in a specific way, like one marketing department team or one product service team, that sort of thing that brings everyone together. But at the work group level, that's where you really want that frictionless experience. And you can introduce policies uh, for lifecycle management of teams now uh, and automatic uh, sensitivity labeling so that you can really manage that experience as you may have come to expect managing the experience in SharePoint or other things. So think about these levels of uh, governance as you think about uh, using Teams or expanding your usage of Teams. And even if you've been in Teams for a while, uh, you can come around and, and think about these things and improve the experience. We certainly have done that at Microsoft. 
over the few years that we've been using Teams ourselves. Now, when people are getting started in Teams, I also wanted to call out ahead of time a couple of great resources that are available. Uh, at Ignite last year, we, we introduced the conversational Microsoft Teams book. It's available digitally in bulk and uh, in uh, as a as a paper handout, right? An actual book. <laughs> Imagine that. This is really important because that's how some people learn. You need to respect people's learning modalities as you're teaching them new software. Not everybody learns the same way. Uh, and you may not be able to get everyone into an hour long class to learn the basics of Microsoft Teams. So uh, this is one way that you're able to provide people with a leave behind one way or another, uh, analog or digital, that will help them understand how to get the most out of the basics. And it covers chat and private channels and uh, other things like how to best set up your project. If you happen to be a manager, uh, I highly encourage you to take it, take a look at Adopted Embrace's Microsoft Teams Manager's Guide. It's a longer read, but I think it's very valuable. I'm a little biased. I wrote the forward, and I also wrote the former book with Heather Severino, uh, who's a, a long-term Microsoft certified trainer. But both of these texts really try to bring together uh, the ideas to help you make the most out of Teams in your organization. I'm also going to show you today uh, Microsoft 365 Learning Pathways. And if you haven't heard about this training solution that's provided for free from Microsoft, I certainly hope you will investigate it after today. Uh, it's a fantastic way of bringing training inside of Teams uh, and being able to curate and customize it in your own SharePoint tenancy from our template. Uh, it is available to be installed via the SharePoint provisioning service, as uh, well are some of the other sites you're going to see in my demonstration today. Fabulous quick starter, uh, all of the templates that are out there uh, in the SharePoint provisioning service. And I love working with those folks. I'm a longtime SharePoint advocate, uh, as well as the rest of the workloads in Office 365. And so what I know as a former customer of Microsoft, though, is that I never wanted anything from Microsoft just out of the box. I always wanted to customize it for my own scenarios and my own end users. And that's why we built Learning Pathways the way that we have. We stream content to you, but you can turn on and off different workloads if you don't uh, want to see them. And so I'm really excited about this partnership that I have with the SharePoint engineering team and all the great folks who do our training documentation to deliver this to you. As you think about also these new uh, features that we're going to talk about, uh, make sure you keep in mind these top 10 adoption best practices. I did a whole session on this at Ignite. It's still out there online. I'll be updating it over the course of the year as I speak at other events and, and do other webinars. But it's important to think of the, that there are two sets of those objectives for IT and for end users. For IT, and as you transform your relationship as an IT manager with business, you wanna be thinking about how to streamline processes, doing simple automations, uh, bringing together the power of things like Power Automate, uh, Forms, Flow, and these sorts of things, or Azure Cognitive Services. Bring these things together in ways that are meaningful to your business to enable those use cases so that you can show people what this does. Uh, people need a visual example that is important to them. Uh, showing them our use cases is great, but uh, and we have plenty of them, but it's always important to make sure that you're talking to people in the language of their business and what's important to them, and then providing that guidance, like with M365 Learning Pathways, about how they can achieve uh, the same thing. If you're an end user and you're joining us today, then we want to make sure that you're using chat and apps and tabs and meetings. Right, get the most out of this. It is not just a chat application. It is not just a replacement for Skype for business uh, online. It's so much more than that with the integrations that you can do. And what I like to think of as the connective tissue to other parts of Office 365. But be intentional, move your projects. Make sure that you are uh, having a reason for people to come and join your team, not just saying, hey, I've got Teams, come check it out. That's great, but people need a reason to give you their time. Uh, you know, and I, I really wanna respect people's time. Everybody's really busy. People have a lot of competing priorities. And so if they're going to give me time and come and look at what I'm doing, then I wanna make sure that they have something relevant there for them, either in the conversation, in the files, uh, in the workflow or the form, I might be able to embed something of that nature. 
the advent of planner and now tasks and teams is really a game changer because it brings together that ability to easily track tasks. Um, planner's been in teams for some time and uh, we've made announcements about tasks and teams, which you can also see on my show, Coffee in the Cloud, and I'll talk about it today. And those things really bring together something that everyone needs to do, track what needs to be done next. Uh, and do make sure that you are helping your users um, and you yourself are using the mobile app. I love the mobile application. I, as I mentioned, I'm in it all the time, either on my iPad or my actual phone. And I feel like this is really indicative of the, of the culture that Satya is driving here at Microsoft, as is the entire development of a product like Teams. Uh, the mobile application of both Android and iOS is really fantastic and helps me stay connected on the go. Right, it, because oftentimes I'm not at my desk. I could be working literally from any city in the world, and I need to be able to reach out to my team, connect with people, get information, and get work done while I'm on the go. So, having these business objectives of mind as we flip through and talk about uh, new features is important, as well as what we're hearing from our customers. Uh, our customers who have been on this journey with us, all of you. Uh, we've had been very lucky and, and quite humbled by the response to the product. We hear your requests uh, for new features. We're doing a large push on our user voice instance right now uh, to provide updates and answers to things who have been out there for some time. But we're really proud of what we've delivered, especially when you take into account that we are only uh, going on four years old now. And uh, you know, starting a new product like this inside Microsoft has been quite a journey. And we learn the most from all of you. Uh, the way you use the product, the way you're really using it to drive efficiencies. Uh, you can see the kinds of uh, commentary that we have here, speeding communication, enabling efficient working, and collaborating uh, to better serve residents in this case, but you know, customers. That's the goal, right? That's the point of what we're doing here. Again, it's not about the features themselves. It's about how they marry into the objectives you already have. If you're thinking about planning a project from Skype for Business to Teams, make sure you're taking into account these types of outcomes. Uh, yes, of course, we'd like you to move to the new uh, experience because we know you're going to have improved uh, quality gains and additional features, both on the administrative side and on the end user side. But what we're really excited about is those capabilities of bringing that collaboration experience together with chat and modern meetings and new devices that will uh, land these sorts of results. So um, what we're seeing here also uh, in chat and collab is that we've really launched an awful lot of new features and capabilities. Um, those features and capabilities, uh, you can always stay up to date on uh, via uh, the M365 roadmap. And um, also, we every month publish a What's Do in Teams uh, entry on our blog. And I want to flip over uh, to our blog for a moment uh, so that you can see that. Let me go over to my other window here. So this is the AK.MS uh, Teams blog, and you can see that we have many announcements happening here, uh, new items about shift workers, uh, per security and compliance for Microsoft Teams, and then here's our what's new in Microsoft Teams for December 2019. So this, in compilation with message center posts in the admin center, give you a really good handle on what's coming and what's new. And I also want to call out my new post here, updated guidance for organizing teams and channels, including uh, our new uh, private channel information. So I had a very popular <laughs> video out there previously about how to organize your teams and channels, so we've updated that. Uh, I've also included here a link to the PowerPoint presentation, and that PowerPoint presentation gives you example designs for teams. So I encourage you to go to our blog, uh, and you know, avail yourself of it. Uh, one of the also uh, great things that you can also do is you can put an RSS feed of our blog uh, in uh, your team's uh, channel. And I often have folks in uh, champion teams uh, have one called social feeds or alerts, 
and uh, being able to uh, subscribe to the RSS feed brings these posts directly into Teams. So I definitely encourage you to do that. Private channels were a big deal, uh, but so is cross-channel posting and announcements and priority notifications. These are all things that are general availability today, and we have so much more coming. Uh, coming soon, being able to pin a channel multi-window. We know, we heard you. Many people want to be able to have more than one window open directly from the desktop rich client. Uh, we are furiously working on that. Uh, and it will uh, likely come in phases uh, over time, but it will definitely come to all of you, uh, as well as uh, deeper integrations with Outlook and Yammer, Tasks and Advisor, all of which, uh, most of which I'm going to show you here in a moment. So I want to make sure that you, though, um, do have a good view of private channels. Uh, so private channels had not launched yet when I was at ESPC this last time. Uh, it is now in general availability. Um, and uh, you know the the key here is that this is really important to minimize team sprawl. Sometimes you're going to bring together a, a group of people. Um, it could be an organization, or as I mentioned, that cross organizational team. But there are managers within that, or people who may need to have private conversations, like about budget or hiring. Originally in our product, that required you to create a second team. Now you can have a private channel within the parent. Uh, team that you have provisioned and that allows for those focused private collaboration spaces It does create an additional SharePoint site collection uh, To give you a secure boundary for your files There are some limitations in terms of what's available inside a private channel right now and we are working to reduce those limitations uh, But it really does change the game in terms of team usage and I know this was a blocker for many of you so and for those of you who've been with us for some time, as I mentioned, now's the time to be thinking about how to leverage private channeling in your organization. You can use that blog post that I showed you with the video to get more insight on that. And we have heard your requests about being able to switch a channel from public to private and back again. Uh, that capability isn't available today, but we're certainly working on it as well as many other things and what we like to affectionately call Teams Algebra, moving and renaming and changing and things like uh, working on uh, making sure that when you change the name of a channel, the supporting SharePoint folder also changes names. And so we've heard you on those things. We are working on all of them. Uh, and we hope that you're going to get the most out of that. That is not the only place though that we've done innovation and certainly in the meeting space we have as well. Uh, we like to think about meetings in terms of a life cycle. So there's before the meeting, there's during the meeting and after the meeting. Now, I've run a lot of meetings in my life as a career portfolio or project manager uh, and the art of a good meeting really has to do with the way that you're getting along with the people who are in that meeting and being able to healthily communicate expectations and items completed or open before, during, and after it. And this is really where Microsoft Teams shines, like bringing together a lot of those capabilities. Um, even doing things like background blur, having your whiteboard there, obviously chat and files and notes built into the meeting is amazing, but more of that is coming. Uh, doing things like live captioning, right? In this era of inclusivity and global work, um, live captions are something I leave on even in my meetings inside Microsoft because I often may be dealing with many people from around the world. Uh, and those live captions uh, can really help them understand uh, what I'm saying. Of course, so does speaking human. <laughs> I'm always a fan of leaving out all those acronyms, but if you work at Microsoft, we are a very acronym happy company. Uh, and so for people to be able to ask questions quickly, like what is ESPC 45? <laughs> what, are, what do these acronyms actually mean? Right, that's an important piece there. So live captions and auto translations, meeting recordings, these sorts of things really help me extend the life cycle of the meeting and be inclusive if somebody couldn't join us. Um, I'm gonna make another plug here too for the mobile experience because the mobile experience is really great. Uh, I have literally done large presentations from my mobile device with Office on my phone in the middle of an airport. It is not my preferred way. Of, of necessarily doing a presentation like that. But the fact that I could 
uh, and still show up for the people who needed information from me was really fantastic. So I, I definitely enjoyed enjoy that work. And many, many people are using mobile devices, especially when you take into account first line workers. Um, the experience for first line workers today, uh, these people who are critical to the delivery of your service or product is often outdated, fragmented, and overly complex. Um, many first line workers don't feel like they have enough technology to actually do their job well. And um, line managers and people who are managing first line workers need information quickly from folks, um, but they can't always get that. And sometimes the experience uh, is difficult or confusing. But Microsoft Teams were able to impact that first line worker experience. And so uh, really thinking about um, people who are out in the field, who are with your customers, uh, who are out on the floor, either on a manufacturing line or in a retail scenario. Certainly, I wish I'd had Microsoft Teams in my days as a consultant out in the field, working with customers, building things uh, that would have definitely streamlined my communication of service issues or updating of RFPs, things of that nature. There are many, many scenarios where first-line workers uh, need better technology support. Last week at the National Retail Federation Conference, we announced many more capabilities for first-line workers. Uh, and we will continue to do this. This is a big focus for our product uh, and for Microsoft in general, uh, continuing to empower those people who are closest to the customer and not necessarily tied to a desk. And um, as you can see here, many of these capabilities um, are designed by you. I mean, this is in response to things that you have asked for, being able to publish tasks, uh, having integrations uh, with workforce management tools, uh, being able to sign in via SMS, and also uh, being able to control uh, when your potentially your hourly workers uh, are getting into the application. That's a regulatory uh, issue in many uh, regions. Uh, making sure that there's shared device sign out appropriately and delegating user management. Uh, think about that in the retail situation. The central IT team may not uh, have the time or the capacity to manage all the change of workers in a retail location. So that user management can be delegated to somebody in that region uh, to manage those people coming and going in a retail environment. Uh, so being able to support these features uh, in this first line capability is really um, exciting. You can learn more about those announcements at the link shown on the screen, aka.ms Teams FLW new and you know stay stay tuned to this space because the different sorts of solutions that we're doing uh, that are targeted towards really empowering this this connection uh, is central to us really living out the strategy of this product um, making sure that people in a headquarters are connected to their first line frontline workers making sure that those first line workers um, have a good connection to the customer and having customers connected to the people that need to get information. That's the loop that you can really, I believe we can all really improve. Uh, this is just a recap of some of those features uh, that are coming and that we have announced. And, you know, phew. Uh, so I just flew through more features than anybody could ever think of, right? And, and that's really scratching the surface of the types of innovations that we're thinking about doing um, across the product. And, you know, with innovation uh, comes change. And change is an even more important skill to manage uh, as you are thinking about an implementation of Microsoft Teams. You know, I am, you know, having spent a good part of my career in IT, I'm very cognizant of the impact this kind of product has on people's day-to-day -day lives, uh, both in IT and in business. And so that's why I'm always talking about business outcomes, because we are going to keep bringing you features at this pace for some time uh, as we continue to drive innovation across uh, Office 365 and receive innovation from other services to bring into that hub for teamwork, like Project Cortex and other uh, AI innovations and Azure innovations, applications and what have you. Uh, and so, you know, this is why this connection uh, is very important. I'm going to hop over now uh, into the product itself because I want to talk about a couple things that I think are going to help you get the most out of it. So 
Uh, one thing that you should know, I am, I am here in the uh, admin center uh, for Microsoft Teams. So I'm using the new administration experience. Maybe it looks a little bit different than yours. Um, if you're an IT admin and you're on the line listening to this, I highly encourage you to have your own demo tenant. Uh, people hear me say this often. I even have my own that I pay for on the side. It's where I can learn and play and understand what's happening in Office 365 without breaking anything. Uh, and so if you don't have that or have access to this experience, uh, I think it's an important thing if you're going to be managing teams uh, or even if you are in charge of driving the adoption of teams. Uh, because this is where many uh, policies can be set. Uh, you can manage teams from this location. What are those uh, team's policies? Um, policies are important because you can control the experience with them. It, we come with this global org-wide policy, uh, but now you can add others. I'm gonna call this first line. And you'll notice as you set this new policy for what, this is the umbrella uh, control mechanism for the experience that people will have inside of Teams the product. Uh, you can also uh, set some new key features. Can people discover private teams, uh, private versus public, of course, and can they, at an Uber level, create private channels? It may be you don't want your first-line workers to create private channels. Uh, maybe you only want a certain subset of users to be able to do that. Um, that's something I want you to think about in terms of those tiers of governance that you're doing. Uh, so you can control this at this uh, policy level here. And as I go in and I select this, um, I can manage users and then, of course, uh, set people to have this be their default policy. So again, being able to edit that uh, is an important thing. Teams apps also have policies, and I want to call to your attention that ability to do the same thing here. I can add another policy level and I can control, I'm going to say first line here as well, I can control the types of uh, apps that I want my first-line workers to have access to. But again, this could be any subset of users in your organization. I happen to be using first-line uh, as an example. And now uh, I can go in and search um, for the types of apps that I might want to use here uh, that I can add uh, from the store. Let's go ahead. And I would be able to add them here uh, to allow specific apps, right? The same thing is true with third-party apps. I'm going to do one more thing here. Um, there we go, OneNote. I definitely want my people in the field to have OneNote, right? And I might even want them to have SharePoint, uh, SharePoint lists especially. I'm going to go ahead and add that. And I'm going to allow that. So I'm controlling which Microsoft apps as well as what third-party apps I want people to have access to. Uh, tenant apps refer to those apps that you may be publishing yourself. Uh, and I am going to go ahead and allow all apps there because those are usually relevant uh, in the sense of I've, I've published them as an enterprise user. But if I obviously if I wanted to change that, I could once again allow those specific apps. And I'm going to make sure that they have getting started an app, which I'm going to show you in a moment. So being able to control what people can discover, whether they can create private channels, and the types of permissions for apps. Um, some of these are, are reasonably new features that you may or may not have been aware of. Uh, you may be concerned about all the apps that are available in our product. And so you are in charge of that. Uh, there's similar things for messaging policies and certainly for meetings in terms of configuring conference bridges and the types of meeting policies uh, that are available. But I also want to show you something I'm really proud of. I had a little bit of a hand in a great working with a great team inside, and this is the planning area. We've released something called Advisor for Teams, and the Teams Advisor basically helps you create a plan for the deployment and adoption of Microsoft Teams. We know these things can be complex. And so we wanted to simplify this process. Uh, right now, there are a couple different types of plans that we have pre-configured, but we'll be publishing more. Uh, and for other products, like for SharePoint, uh, or for uh, just uh, managing, uh, deploying a champions program, for instance. I can click on add here, and I can see that I can deploy a plan to enable meetings and conferencing. 
And this brings together the work I need to do in the admin center and the work I need to do with my users. And it includes things like a plan and certain types of forms. I'm gonna back up here though, and I'm gonna show you that I have already created this plan uh, for uh, deploying chat teams uh, and channels and doing adoption of team. I can view this plan directly here. I also want to call it the fact that you don't have to be an administrator to get to this feature now. You can get to this feature unless your IT pro has turned it off uh, and work and deploy these types of plans. Uh, and it builds everything right here into this pane, but even more importantly, it deploys a team in Teams. And the team is called service management. Uh, and it builds in certain channels for you. And it builds a channel for the plan you are trying to do, adding everything that needs to be done into a planner in that area. And so, for instance, you want to configure and validate team settings. We have pre-configured this with what you need to do, a checklist, as well as links to all of the documentation. Uh, we will be creating a plan that is specifically for Skype for Business to Teams, as well as other things. We think that this is really going to help people get a step up, and also you can assign these items to people. You can add additional items. Once you're here, it's a planner that you can do anything with. We'll also be adding things like forms to it. Uh, people ask us all the time, hey, how should I be measuring satisfaction with Microsoft Teams? Well, we're adding for you here an example form. Obviously, you're going to want to change this for your own environment, but the fact that we kind of give you this kickstart, I think is one of the great things that Microsoft can do for its customers. We see many, many implementations and we can help you, um, you know, skip some of the potholes in the process. Advisor for Teams is available today. Uh, you should be able to, to get to this and, and provision your own plan. Um, even if you choose not to do some of the items, at least you'll know what those items are and you'll be following our best practice of planning teams with teams. You'll notice that we called this service management because I envision people being able to create channels here for exchange, uh, for again, for Cortex or for other projects they may be working on. Uh, maybe you wanna go through and upgrade your devices uh, and do work with your facilities teams. Um, to do that, I will definitely encourage you to go to ak.ms uh, Teams devices and see the new types of devices that are available. We have several categories of certified devices that are available now, and we really believe in these devices because they provide the type of audio quality that we think is important for a quality meeting. Uh, and so there's uh, devices in every category and at a variety of price points. Um, they do have different availability around the world, so you'll need to check that. But as you think about capital investments over time, uh, it's very important that you think about how you're really driving inclusivity and making sure that you have modern focus rooms and places for people to work when they're in your facility, as well as being able to uh, help people work better when they are either at their desk or on the road, uh, depending upon the type of, of work that they're doing. All of those things, of course, are great to use uh, with the way that you're working in Teams. Now you'll notice here, I'm in Teams, and I have configured the left rail. This is also something you can do with the policies that I was showing you. You can choose what is pinned on the left rail for groups of employees. Uh, and so you can also see here in my interface that I have uh, in, implemented private channels. Uh, so I'm using DTX Company Hub. This is my uh, pretend company, something different from Contoso for once. Uh, and this is like my intranet for this organization. And so I have built into this a uh, place for my employees to talk. And I've also pinned a beautiful uh, intranet page um, one that I have provisioned from the SharePoint provisioning service right here so people can find that information. And I'm using a couple of different templates uh, to show them here inside of Teams, uh, Meet Our Leaders, which is definitely around uh, you know, creating employee morale and, and connectivity, but also uh, I built in an employee satisfaction form, right? And so I really think it's important that we give our employees a voice in the process of digital transformation. It is, after all, about them. If they don't like or don't use or don't understand what we're working so hard to deliver, then we are missing the mark. 
And even though sometimes you're going to get feedback that can be quite painful, frankly, uh, certainly some of the commentary that I see and the feedback that we're reading can be, can be uncomfortable, but it's important to understand those frustrations. Uh, it's important to be open and transparent to hearing what people have to say, even if it's not complimentary. And then you can incorporate that in your prioritization as you're doing work in that agile service management way to bring new capabilities. So I have pinned this form here inside. And of course, this is uh, going right now. These items are being captured uh, in uh, an Excel spreadsheet, uh, but I could easily make a Power BI dashboard out of this. Now, of course, this is what I call a one-to-many experience. This DTX Company Hub is for all folks, and every employee in the company is added to this team, so they have a starting point. Consequently, I need a place for content managers to be able to have a conversation uh, and talk about what it is they're doing, and so that's the purpose of a private channel there. Teamwork Champions is another example of, of uh, sharing information, um, and you will notice here too that I'm using icons. Many of you are going to want to use naming conventions as you are uh, creating uh, inform you know, different types of team names, but I also encourage you to use those icons. As you're scrolling through a list of teams, what your brain is actually looking at is really the icon. It can parse that visual much, much faster than the words. And I'm also a big fan of suffixes in naming conventions, not prefixes, because then everything starts to look the same, right? If everything says FRA for France and, you know, IT for IT and then the name, then you just got this list of, of, of teams. Uh, it's not very user friendly. So do think about that as you're doing naming. This is an example of my standard teamwork champions team. Uh, you can see the types of categories that I have. Uh, making sure to incorporate uh, tabs is a very important piece of really driving usage. Uh, I happen to be incorporating here our team's adoption guide, uh, which I have pinned inside. I can get rid of this. And so people have a place to start. As you create your teams, think about new employees. Think about change. Think about people coming on and off your team. Even in your organization, if it doesn't happen a lot, uh, if you're one of those rare organizations where people really stay put, it still builds a better experience if you think about what does a new person need to know as they come on? Well, in this case, this is about teamwork adoption. They need to know about the teamwork adoption guide. They need to be able to see the Microsoft 365 adoption guide so that they are grounded in the best practices for adoption for all of uh, Office 365 and, and uh, other things. And so uh, making sure that there's this information in here is really helpful. Um, so I also want to call out some of the other things that are going to be happening in Teams here. Now this ellipses here, uh, you're able to see, this is another area that you can configure and gives you access to additional uh, capabilities. So you heard me talk a little bit about tasks tasks is going to be able to roll up information from to do and from planner and from outlook tasks all in one place i'm very excited about this i'm actually going to go ahead and flip over here to my desktop client and show that um, first however i will show you here this is an example of cross posting in chat um, if you haven't done this already, if you're in a larger organization, you will love the ability to write a post once and put it in multiple channels. So this is this and being able to pin certain channels that you're working on, really, really helpful uh, to organization and to your actual workflow uh, in the process itself. Um, also helpful is the types of abilities that you have with these new apps. I'm going to show you first off Yammer here. This is the new Yammer experience uh, built into Teams as an app. And sometimes people are like, well, why am I doing this, right? Why am I using Yammer and Teams? Well, Yammer is for those broad conversations where I often don't know the people that I'm getting an answer from. Teams is where I usually know most of the people. They're either in my department or we work together on a common goal and we're working together on a, on a regular uh, basis. And so um, having those two things is very important. Also, you can see that the types of communities that I have here, even inside Microsoft, when we launched Microsoft Teams, we launched it with a Yammer community to provide support. 
So there are broad conversations that you want to have across your entire company. And if you're more than 5,000 people, you're going to want to use Yammer for that. And even if you're smaller than that, but you have an investment and people understand Yammer already, you want to integrate that in to the experience that you're having. Uh, I'm also going to go ahead over and go back to my conversation area here. All right. Um, I also did want to call out here in the demonstration area that we do have that ability to do things like add connectors. So connectors are important because they can bring information from other locations into my conversation area. Um, and this really, again, helps people reduce that context switching. One of the things I really like to do is even something simple like an RSS feed. Remember, I mentioned that earlier where I can take an RSS feed and bring it into Teams. I can configure this easily. I can give it a name. I can paste in the link to that RSS feed. And then I can choose how often I want those updates. And this keeps people from getting overwhelmed with notifications uh, in that activity feed, which I very much hope you're using. Use your activity feed, uh, much like I used my old inbox in Outlook, which I still go to, though not as often. Uh, I use my activity feed and making sure that I have these posts in here from things like even our team's blog or the driving adoption blog or the M365 learning, pa uh, learning pathways information. All of that uh, can be brought directly into Teams. Speaking of learning pathways, I want to show you something cool. So Learning Pathways is a SharePoint site that is provisioned from the SharePoint provisioning engine. And we have also built an app to bring that training experience directly into Teams. I happen to call it Getting Started, uh, but you can call it anything you want. And yes, you can change that icon, uh, but it brings that training portal directly into Teams so that people can find the right information they need. Now this app is extremely simple. Uh, it is a series of tabs that are URLs that simply allow people to navigate a SharePoint site and find information. Um, I organized it at the top. I configured it there because I wanted people to see it easily, but it could just as easily be further down this list uh, from a priority perspective. I used an example of doing Teams, and so I wanted to show the specific page for Teams training. This is all training that is streaming directly from Microsoft. And this is important because we want to make sure that you're not in the business of updating training decks and videos. That should be our business. You should be in the business of adding additional custom playlists to this experience for your own employee onboarding or expense reports or other things that you might want to create. When I click on a particular playlist, I'm able to see, in this case, a video with also with additional information. Uh, I've got my next button so I can continue to click through this. Um, we are not a learning management system though in, in Learning Pathways and so we're not keeping track of who has created uh, or completed what playlist, but you can see views and all of the standard information that you get uh, out of SharePoint Analytics with this site. I also want to highlight OneDrive basics in this scenario. So I want people to understand when to use OneDrive and how, but I can do more. I can also show the IT Help Desk site that I've created, again, using one of those templates from the, the provisioning service or my HR site. All of this is configurable, uh, and you could have more than one version of this uh, getting started app. Um, we're updating, I'm actually updating uh, in the next week or so, the code for this. It is in beta right now as we resolve some loading issues, but it's really exciting to me, especially now that we have App Studio available. Because if you want to make changes to this app, it's a very simple thing to do. I'm here in App Studio. I have the rights to be able to get to this uh, from an admin perspective. And you can see here is an app that I've already imported into my enterprise catalog. I can click on this and I can see details about it. So here's where I could change the name if I wanted to, uh, or short or long names of this application. But even more important, I can go here to tabs and I can make a change to the link that is driven here uh, in this particular tab if I wanted to and switch it out to something else. Um, so it's a, it's a very simple thing to be able to edit uh, and um, you can also do it if you're familiar with, with doing a little bit of code in any editor, uh, you can also make an edit to this. But I love the App Studio because it's built right in uh, and it gives a good visualization to 
the domains and permissions also that this app requires, which is obviously only up to yours, uh, and other things. So if I wanted to add an additional tab that I wanted to show, I could certainly do that, uh, and that information is available to me. So this is one of those use cases of where you're bringing together all of the components of Office 365. You're using SharePoint, you're using the app platform, you're bringing it into Teams. Uh, you can also pin these sorts of pages, specific pages if I wanted to, into a particular team uh, if I wanted to, to do that to really help people uh, understand a particular topic uh, under best practices and how-tos, I can do that. So uh, as I've done here, and then I can have conversation about that right inside of Teams. So again, I really want you to think about what's important to you, what's important to your company uh, as you think about the different types of app experiences and things that you can use uh, around all of this. And when you want to find out more, you can just visit our Adoption Hub, right? Uh, AK.M is Microsoft Adoption. Uh, it has a security and compliance guide I spoke about, the Teams adoption guide I showed, uh, and links to our uh, monthly Office 365 Champions program. I talk about this and more with all of the services and use cases and how to run Champions programs uh, there in those monthly calls. Um, and of course, you can get access to that M365 Learning Pathways end user training solution from here. And if you're really going for it, uh, like I am, why I encourage you to take our Service Adoption Specialist course. That is a free course that's available online, will allow you to earn your certificate and what it means to drive uh, adoption of Microsoft services uh, using Microsoft Teams as, as an example. So I hope that I have shared with you some valuable information today. I wanna make sure that I leave time to answer some questions. Uh, there are many, many more things coming, and I do encourage you also to stay tuned to that Teams blog so that you can uh, see what's new every month and see our major announcements there. Um, we're just getting started. So much more to, to share, and so I'm really excited uh, to answer your questions. Uh, thanks for a great presentation, Caravana. Yes, we will now start the questions and answers part. And should you wish to ask a question, please type it into the question window now. Okay, Caravana, we have a few questions in, so I'll just get started straight away. Uh, okay. First question. Hi, um, as a user, do I have access to one terabyte to store files? And if I have OneDrive for business, do I use an extra one terabyte? Yes, that is true. Um, so there, there's a shared storage across the services, um, but if you're using SharePoint and OneDrive together, um, that is shared. There's also Stream and other services that are using the storage. Most people, I have to say, don't hit those limits, um, but if you do, then that's something to think about. And also, you should be thinking about where you're storing your files. Um, you know, I, I often hope that my users do not have one terabyte of things in their OneDrive because that tells me that all of their work product is in OneDrive instead of being in SharePoint or Teams where it's shared and accessible to others. So uh, you do have that storage available to you, but uh, I always hope that people are saving and sharing smart. Okay. For meetings, is it possible to write the minutes of the meeting and follow it up in Teams? Uh, yes, you can. So if you're in meeting, a meeting in Teams, you can use meeting notes uh, and you can track tasks there. Um, that is kind of the purpose of the meeting notes that are built into the Teams meeting experience. I have many project managers, however, who have been managing projects a long time, and instead what they do is they track notes in OneNote. They have a OneNote for that particular project, which may be pinned in a channel or a team, and uh, they're using a planner, as I was showing earlier, to track those tasks. So it's really up to you, and, and I encourage people, have a conversation with the team you're working on about how you want to do this work. Um, it's all well and good if people are using minutes and then tasks inside of that, but if no one knows they're there or no one else agreed that that's how they want it to work, then it will be a frustrating process for all of you. So have a quick conversation. Usually in my meeting agendas, when I send out an appointment, I'll say core collaboration location and I give a link to the channel, uh, which you can get in the actual client itself. And then I'll also put a link to where we keep notes and tasks or if there's a planner. So 
if you get in those good habits and have that conversation, you will get to use all the goodness. Great. Apologies about the noise. There's a guy starting a car outside. Uh, okay, <laughs> when can we have Planner in a private channel? That is coming. I do not have a date for you, but we are definitely working on it. Making sure that those uh, security boundaries are maintained is obviously very important. Uh, that there's also IT pro controls over that is important as well from a PowerShell perspective. Uh, so they are working on that furiously. Unfortunately, I do not have a date for you at this time. Okay. Uh, do you know when past the app getting started will be in production? Yes, uh, we are shooting for it to be in production this quarter, which means by the end of March, I would like it out the door as quickly as possible. I want to resolve a couple of bugs I have. Occasionally with the Getting Started app, it does not load the iframe the first time, so I need to work on the caching solution there or a splash screen uh, so that it will auto reload. That's really the issue that I'm digging into right now. Um, other than that, it, it's certainly good to go, but it'll come out this quarter. Great. Uh, where do we find Get Started app demonstrated in Microsoft Teams? Uh, you can find that in uh, the present this presentation, which I'm sure you'll be able to, to download. It's also in my Ignite presentation. Uh, there is a link to it on the M365 uh, Learning Pathways documentation page, uh, as well as in GitHub. And I can also provide the link, the link here. Okay. Uh, are there plans to increase increase gain of participants in a group chat up to at least 150? Yes, there are. Those plans are in process now. I believe the number is 250 uh, so that it will match the number of meeting participants. Uh, I don't think you can quote me on that number, but we are working on increasing the number of people in a group chat. I believe that's your, I believe that's your question. So we're definitely working on that, just as if we, we are also working on increasing the number of people who can be in a team. Okay. Uh, will hardware validated with Skype for Business also become Teams compatible? Not uh, automatically. There is a certification process for hardware providers, uh, and we have new uh, and improved uh, requirements uh, for audio and noise cancelling and other things. And so it is not an automatic one-to-one -one, um, uh, experience. Just because something was team cert, uh, excuse me, Skype for Business certified does not mean it will be team certified. So I do encourage you to uh, check back uh, in our documentation, uh, aka.ms Success with Teams, uh, to learn about certified devices. Great, and that's the questions, Caravana. Well, that's fantastic. Uh, that was good. Stump the, <laughs> stump the presenter. <laughs> I managed to come up with an answer. That's fantastic. I really enjoy doing these sorts of webinars. You can find me out on the Driving Adoption blog. Uh, as I mentioned, I do run that Office 365 Champions program. Uh, I talk a lot on Twitter and LinkedIn about these topics, so you can follow me there. Uh, I really want to thank the folks at ESPC. You are awesome partners. I love coming to your event every year. I'm looking forward to coming in and doing more leadership and career development and technology talks at this at ESPC 20. Amsterdam, super exciting. Uh, really, really happy that you announced that today. And just remember, all of this is about enabling your business objectives. Right. You will always hear Microsoft employees talk a lot about features. That is what we, we do. We build software uh, for a living. Um, but there's, there's some of us that are really interested in empowering you. And there's thousands of us around the world and thousands of you. Um, more than 20,000 people have taken my adoption certification course. I invite you to join that community, uh, even if that's not your core role, because really mastering the six areas of, of what you need to drive business objectives uh, and technology implementations, I think is great for everyone to understand. So, you know, come along with us on this journey and make sure you're having a good time because you're supposed to be enjoying this process. Uh, and if you're not, why? reach out and we can help you make a pivot so you are. <laughs> Great. Caruana, on behalf of the ESPC community, thank you so much for taking the time today to complete this webinar. Uh, we really appreciate it. You are more than welcome. I hope everyone has a wonderful day uh, wherever you are around the world. And I will sign off from beautiful Seattle, Washington. Thank you so much. Thank you, Caruana.
Okay, everybody. Um, again, a big thank you to Caruana. And don't forget that we do have upcoming webinars. Please check out SharePointEurope.com for further details on all upcoming webinars. As Caruana just mentioned there, today we did announce ESPC20 in Amsterdam from the 9th to the 12th of November 2020. Check out SharePointEurope.com where you will be able to receive an exclusive 30% discount voucher. So get over there straight away. Uh, that is the end of today's webinar. Please see SharePointEurope.com for further details of all upcoming webinars or visit our resource center for all previous episodes. Thank you once again to Caruana and thank you for joining us. Take care and goodbye.